Hey everybody, so sorry for the delay on this video, but I actually moved to a new apartment. So that's why kind of why this uh, delay, I had to renovate everything. So paint the walls, put in the flooring, uh, was a lot of work. So I really didn't have any time to edit this video. Uh, but here we are, new room. So in this new apartment, I finally have a separate uh, working space uh, and also to record. So I can just leave these lights that I'm using for recording out here. Um, and I just have a separate sort of work slash nerd room so i also have a bunch of retro consoles here in the back so uh nintendo 64 gamecube uh, uh, uh playstation 2 nes so uh, super cool i bought a retro tv as well so it's going to be my nerd den kind of um so yeah uh that's that's why the delay um super happy here i still need to put some acoustic paneling so there might be some reverb here uh maybe not i'm, I'm not sure uh but yeah super happy with this i even i have a separate uh, server room as well down here in the back i'll probably do a separate video on the new space here but uh separate server type room well it's a walk-in closet i'm using it as a server room slash walk-in closet so i have my switch there i have a bunch of computers there so two computers there i have uh, another computer in the living room my workstation is here so i have everything now in the uh, uh in the home network everything is uh it's working great uh, so yeah, I want to do a quick introduction for today's uh, 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 water cooling workstation video that uh, uh, by now was recorded uh, about two months ago, so back in October. Uh, because uh, when we're going to start the video, I'm going to be in the kitchen um, because I'm going to be pre-flushing the radiator. I figured it would make sense to sort of do an introduction, but like not jump completely straight into my natural habitat, the kitchen. Um, so, so that's why I sort of this intro. And also uh, this is gonna be a very long video and I was thinking of cutting it shorter and just making sort of an impression video, but I figured it's gonna be more useful to sort of have it as a, like a reference guide, I guess, if you wanna do your own water cooling uh, build and you're not completely sure what to do you can fall back to this video because I'm showing every step for the water cooling. I'm explaining everything. Uh, I'm showing all of the mistakes that I made. Uh, I figured this would be more useful than it's kind of more of a sort of, I guess, uh, a build log slash um, tutorial type thing. So learn as I go uh, type thing. So that's why the video is super long. So I still hope you really enjoy it, um, even though it's super long, but I figured this would make more sense uh, for like the people that might be interested in watching this. Anyway, let's uh, now just dive into the kitchen and let's clean out the radiator. And I hope you, uh, well, and hope you enjoy today's video. Get back in the kitchen. warming up some distilled water, uh, distilled water here, because I'm going to be pre-flushing my radiator, which is this thing. Um, it's my first time doing water cooling, but I read all over the place that pre-flushing it uh, is probably a good idea, because there might be some gunk left over uh, from the factory, and if that gets in your water cooling loop, it can cause issues long-term. So I'm going to just put it in, just whisk it around with some warm water, I'm not gonna boil it, um, but uh, so it's going to be distilled water. You don't want to use a regular water app thing because that might lead to growth in your system. Even though you're going to flush this out, I figured I'd also do the pre-flush just with distilled water. And I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar um, just to help to clean. And I'm just going to rinse it a couple of times. Um, so yeah, let's see how it goes. Maybe something like that. Take these little mm -hmm. knobs out. And let's if quick, I'm just gonna try to pour it in and see how it goes. If there is any gunk, it's gonna come loose. If there is actually gunk, it's gonna come out of this. You'll actually see some pieces there. You can see. Not sure how clear it is on camera, but there's a Alright, so this is gonna need to think about this. So this is gonna go in the case like this. So I guess if I'm gonna put them here, then the cables will all be here and I can sort of nicely route them over there to the left. Um, Uh, 
So this is the uh, the performance radiator. Uh, they also have another thicker one. That one wasn't in stock, but from what I heard, also when it gets too thick, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because you're also just gonna lose air pressure from the fans. So I think the performance one should be fine. This one should cool up to around 500 watts. It mentioned. I guess if you crank up the fan speed you could have it cool even more but uh so we have these cables on the side which is to be a little bit neater <laughs> now well you know what i'm just gonna plug them in and then we'll see how it looks once i have it in the case there we go yeah. all right plug it in for now all right, let's just put it in the case. All right, so I'm just gonna grab the case now. How do I get this thing out? longer to build the system if I have to record everything. <laughs> okay, I have taken off the side panel. I've finally been able to get this thing sort of loose. And I just wanna get this thing out. Why, why did they make this so hard? I, I found a video online of them showing it to be just a slide out thing, but that's literally not how it works. Like it, it, it doesn't slide out. Like no matter what I try, it just doesn't. It's like it's screwed into place. So how how is this gonna... Okay, I've been able to get it out. There's a sliding mechanism here. So I guess I can put in the, uh, the screws again. Um, move that thing. So I was looking for the IO shield because uh, normally I forget that, but uh, apparently this one has a built in IO shield. So that's quite nice. So I don't have to manually do that. Uh, yeah, alright, all these screws seem to line up. Let's just see what I need to screw this into place, I guess. Okay, so it's actually a day later now because um, I wanted to start mounting the pump. So I was looking at some stuff and then I actually discovered that I uh, didn't have a bracket that I needed. So I immediately ordered uh, two brackets actually because I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. Um, it's actually not necessarily the one that I wanted to get. So it's this one. I would. This is a 140 millimeter bracket i would have preferred a 120 millimeter bracket because then i could have mounted the pump to my to the fans on the radiator uh they didn't have the 120s anywhere and i just i really just want to continue and finish the build so um yeah i'm gonna use this to mount the pump in the bottom um the only downside with this is that i cannot do the the intake fans because i initially also wanted to do some intake fans in the bottom it's not going to be possible if I do it with this one. So uh, I'm going to do, I think, maybe one intake fan in the bottom and then one or two in the top and then an out and an exhaust fan in the back. Uh, because this is going to block off two of the uh, places where I can put the fans. Maybe if I play around it, I can actually make some more space for it, but I'm not sure. Okay, so another thing I wanted to go over quickly is because the most confusing thing to me uh, for doing the water cooling, because as I mentioned, this is my first custom loop and I was super confused about all of this stuff because there's a whole bunch of different sizes for fittings and I didn't know what to pay attention to because there's, uh, if I grab the box for this, uh, it mentions it on this, which sizes there are. So there's 
uh, 9.5 by 12.7, 9.5 by 15.9, 11.11 .11 by 15.9, and 11.7 by 19.1. Um, so I have the 9.5 by 15.9 millimeter, which is quite thick. So the inner diameter of this, this tube is 9.5, and the outer diameter is 15.9. So that makes it quite a thick tubing and I got that because apparently this is easier to uh, to bend so that's why I got a thicker one so but all of the other stuff um, is like the the main side of the plug is all the same because I, I didn't know like I also thought like maybe I have to also match like the water blocks and stuff but with the fittings like I have a pump here and or something is already screwed on let me just take it off real quick but okay, I have this, this thing here, example, and you see these holes, and this is where the fittings go. But the, so if I have a fitting here, the backside here is always the same size. So I can just screw this in, if it wants to screw in, right? So we just screw it in, and then you take off the top, so just, just the, let me just show, so it's like that, and then you can take off the top, so then you have the fitting. Then the tubing would go over here. So you have this tubing, uh, so you would put the screw thing I have, have here from the other side, put it on the tube. You put this on here, which is gonna go a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, Okay, I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> it's just really hard to shove it over. Okay, there we go. So I shoved it over, as you can see. And then you can screw the other side in to just sort of fit it. So the main side doesn't matter. Like the like the, the main thing where you where you plug in the thing is always the, the same size. It's mainly important to match your fittings and your tubing. That's that's the only thing that you need to pay attention to. So it's actually not that bad. Let me just see if I can yeah, pull it off again. So that's the thing that you need to pay attention to. That's like all of the water blocks, pumps, whatever. That's all the same as long as you match your fittings on your tubings and whatever. It's all fine. So let me just go show a couple of extra things. So these are the main fittings. So these are the fittings that I'm using to, uh, gonna be using to uh, screw the, well, get the tubing on there. I have a couple of extra fittings. So I have some angler fittings, which I also put on the CPU. Uh, I sort of have a plan of how I'm gonna do the cabling. I'm, my idea now is to put the, the tubes from the back side of the motherboard. So I have them go over and then to the back. So we'll see if that's actually gonna work. Um, so you can use this to sort of easily angle stuff. And a couple more things that I have. So we also have these things. And again, like all these fittings are the same size. So also a, uh, a little ball valve that I'm gonna use to, uh, to put in there so I can drain the loop if I wanna empty it. But like, for example, if you want to connect like a little ball valve like this to your pump, what you would do is you would get one of these, which has the screws on every on both sides. You would just let me I see a little hair there. Let me remove that. Don't want that in my loop. So you could just screw that in one side, and you could screw like anything you want on the other thing. So then you have like a, a thing with two inputs. So you could like split it here. So anyway, the main point I'm trying to make is just that the, the main inputs are always the same. And that's something that was confusing to me when I wanted to order these parts. So if you've never done water cooling, it's actually not that bad. So just pay attention to <laughs> to that and then, you're, uh, then you should be good. Anyway, with that out of the way, I guess let's start mounting all of the all of the stuff okay so like i mentioned i couldn't get the bracket for the 120 
sadly. So what I'm gonna do is this is the bottom part for the. Uh, let me just move my camera a little bit. Oh, let me just move my face from this camera thing to there. All right. So this came from the bottom of the case, so you can mount fans on this. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to put uh, this thing. Let me just have a look. So I'm gonna put this in here. Really not ideal, but. I mean, if it works, it works. Right? Just improvising here, but I think this should be fine. And I mean, I'm not looked into it. If I can ever get another bracket or whatever, I can always decide that I want to. Uh, I want to change it up. Again, like once I get my 3090, I'm going to, oh, I... Running into clearance issues with the GPU and uh, yeah, I'm always using this placeholder GPU, of course, but um, the problem was that if I mounted the, 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 the reservoir here, wasn't wasn't gonna fit and if I'm gonna fit three or four GPUs later it's obviously gonna be a problem so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move my radiator to the top I'm gonna move it here so the radiator is gonna be around the top I'm gonna connect the pump to the side here so because that should work fine I think I have all of the connections there so I can use the bracket to mount it over here, so it should be absolutely fine, so then the reservoir is going to be there. And then um, I can still do the intakes, uh, well I can actually do the intakes on the side maybe, so that might actually be nice, can do maybe a couple on the sides or on the bottom. We'll see, um, but I'm first going to move this thing here, which is also going to help because I had some issues here with the clearing issues with uh, 12 volt, which I can pull out by the way, it's not connected to the PSU at this point. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. So uh, it's a, it's a, well, I guess I make these mistakes so you don't have to and like this. If you're doing your own build, then you can plan ahead a little bit better than I did here. So anyway, I'm gonna continue. So for the mounting on that, on the side there, I'm gonna need this bracket. So it's a different bracket. I bought two when I bought, cause I wasn't sure what was gonna work. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing. So <laughs> I'm gonna use this. And this is gonna connect to this thing. And then it's gonna be over here. And then I have it nicely on the side. And then it shouldn't give me, I think, any clearance issues with the GPU because it's gonna be here. So you can see that should work. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna try. Hopefully this time I will succeed. The uh, pump is in, finally. So I uh, mounted sideways and actually I also got to have the um, the intake fans over here. So these are gonna be the intake fans, which are gonna spin like this, so they're gonna pu pull in air uh, like this. So let me just move my camera a little bit. Yeah, so they're gonna, air is gonna be pulled in like this, which I think is probably ideal because the GPUs are gonna be here, uh, which are gonna be e air cooled, uh, at least initially. Um, I am going to cool, uh, water cool one of them, but the others are going to be air cooled probably anyway. So that's probably going to be ideal. And again, the radiator is now here on top. So that's going to exhaust hot air upwards. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be that. Um, yeah, pump here. So, and of course, like right now you can, you can sort of look through this, but there's going to be a back thing here. So, uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, I guess let's let's uh, continue and um, then I can finally start start. So now I can finally put in the fittings, uh, put on the uh, the tubing, and then I can finally fill it up and start leak testing. Because I really want to do leak testing tonight, just to make sure that it doesn't leak. So if it doesn't leak, then I can actually do the other stuff, like put in the power supply and like actually start testing the system for stability and other stuff and install it. Because um, I couldn't really do that, and because I didn't have the the, um, the all-in-one, remember I couldn't get the thing off. So uh, once everything works, then we can actually fire it up. So uh, and then of course we need to well we need to finish up the rest of the build as well. Um, so yeah, let's continue with that.
Okay, so I sort of have a plan. I'm going to hook this thing uh, on the CPU up to the uh, front part of the radiator. Then I'm going to put the other part of the CPU. I'm gonna put a thing through here, down there, and then connect it to here maybe. Um, or maybe I can just do it like that. I, I think, yeah, I'm gonna put it on the back just so I don't have, uh, it's gonna look nice with the uh, cabling, I guess. And then this one is also gonna go through there and then to here. And then I'm gonna put a drain port in the back. So let's see how that goes. Screw it into place. Oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to put the thing on. Maybe. All right, so a couple of things changed again, uh, as always, because I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> like I mentioned. All right, so what I have is I have the pump here, and the pump is going to the water block. Then the water block again here is going to the radiator. Then the radiator is going uh, back to the pump. And then down here we have another tube. And you might ask what's that other tube? Well, I gave him a big pee pee. <laughs> he had the pee pee. So uh, this is for draining the loop. Like I just want to be able, because I'm just, uh, first I'm going to flush it with just some distilled water. Going to uh, see if it leaks and all that stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna fill it with regular distilled water, so not the EK fluid that I have, because I also have uh, EK cryo fuel, which I'm gonna use to actually run the loop. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna use uh, uh, demineralized or distilled water to just uh, put it in. I'm gonna have it run for uh, 30 minutes, an hour, see if there's no critical failures or something like that, um, and. If that's not the case, I guess after that tomorrow I can. Well, just like I'm gonna drain it again, then I'm gonna fill it again, then I'm gonna see if there's uh, no leaks if I run for a longer time. So I'm gonna run it for like 12 to 24 hours. So that's without po powering up the machine yet. So you don't want to do that. I'm gonna get into that later. But let's first just fill her up, and then I'll then I'll say uh, how we can, um, yeah, how we can start uh, uh, having it run. Okay, so now we can start filling her up. So I'm gonna just fill it up, fill her up with regular distilled water yet. So I also have this EK cryo fuel, which I'm gonna be using to um, when I fill the actual loop, which is this stuff. Um, but yeah, this is um, this has growth inhibitors in it and stuff. But for my regular uh, just testing, because I'm first gonna flush it, so I'm gonna put some regular distilled water in. I'm gonna run it for 30 minutes to an hour, see if it'll like if nothing really weird happens, I'm gonna drain it. Uh, so like if, if some gunk is left over in it, then it won't be <laughs> in it after again. Um, then after that, I am going to, again, I guess, fill it up with, uh, yeah, with, with some water. Then I'm gonna uh, run it for a longer period of time, see if nothing leaks again, like probably like 12 to 24 hours, see if there's no leaks. And then when that's done, then we can actually power up the actual system because we need to be sure that nothing is leaking because we don't want to wreck the components. So that's uh, that's going to be uh, important. Um, so yeah, one thing that we need, right, a couple of things that we need actually. Uh, so I have this filling bottle, which is quite nice. So I'm going to fill this up with water and then I can easily like put this in the filling hole. So it has a filling hole there. Uh, let me just zoom in on that. Uh, right, yeah, so I need to move this to the side a little bit. All right, so there's a filling hole there. We can just go and put it in and can easily fill it up. Um, and then once that is done, so then once that is done, um, what you also need is you need to have your motherboard uh, plug from your, nothing needs to be plugged into your motherboard. You don't want to put plug on, like don't want to power on anything. So not the motherboard, CPU, whatever. It needs to be turned off. We're only gonna run the loop. Only gonna run the loop. Don't want electricity on anything else. So what you need is one of these. It's very cheap. It's a testing thing. 
Uh, what this plug will do, so let's just pull it up, it's this thing. If you plug this on your motherboard, your 24 pin, then this will allow to power on. You can also make one yourself, but this is really cheap. It's only like two dollars, two euros, wherever you're at. So you want that. And then you gonna plug the, so that's gonna just go into your power supply again. And another plug, uh, just, a, just some uh, Molex connectors. Gonna put the Molex connectors to the pump. We don't need to put in the PWM thing, just the pump that's so gonna run at 100% speed. So I'm gonna fill up the bottle and bottle, and then I'm going to fill up the um, well, the actual loop, and hopefully nothing will break. So let's see. All right, so I'm just gonna put in the. It's a little bit annoying here. I'm just. Right, so I plugged in the thing. Let's just fill it up. Alright, so I'm gonna run it. Um, you need to turn it on, and then once it's almost empty, I'm gonna turn it off again. So, because um, you don't wanna run it dry. So, I guess three, two, one, go. Woo! Something happened. Alright, so I think this should be probably be the last round. I mean, how much more water can it handle, right? I guess I was wrong with that it's less, but it looks like it's almost full, so. Right, and go. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. I uh, was, It's pretty satisf satisfying to see, to see it fill up like that. Uh, She's a thirsty girl. I gave her something to drink. Okay, so I'm going to put some kitchen towel uh, around the fittings now. Um, and I'm going to put on the pump. I leave it run for like 30 to minutes to one hour. Uh, see if nothing is uh, wet. And in the meantime, while I wait, I'm going to water cool myself by taking a nice, nice long bath. Water cooling. Alright, so I've done my own water cooling. Um, I guess now let's check uh, these pieces of paper if they're still dry. Uh, yeah, so no issues. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna drain it yet. I'm gonna put the pieces of paper uh, back on there. I'll just leave it sit without the pump running. Uh, for oh, I'm gonna go to bed in a bit. So I'll just leave it uh, overnight without the pump running. I don't want to risk r having the pump run um, right now. I do want to clean it out first, just in case if there's small things in there, which I don't think. But so I'm gonna leave it there. Just make sure that there's no stuff in there tomorrow. Then I'm gonna drain it. Then I'm going to fill it up with the actual fluid and then I'm going to do another leak test uh, for a prolonged period. So I'm gonna just fire it up. So I'm gonna do that stuff tomorrow morning. Then I'm gonna fire it up, leave it run uh, until I get back, I guess, uh, from work. I'm gonna go to the office uh, in the meantime then. Um, yeah, and then after that, if then everything is fine, I guess I can start putting all of the other components in so it can put the PSU in um, start hooking up the fans all of the other stuff so then uh, and then we should be a lot closer to finally being able to uh, yeah to start installing it get the operating system on there do some benchmarks like get everything working so that's gonna be cool so excited all right it's the next day so I'm going to drain uh, what's hidden here? 
I'm just gonna check the papers and I'm, I'm assuming everything will be fine. I have an empty bottle here, so it was the one that the still water came in and I have... Where is everything? All right, then I have this thing. I'm just gonna put this in. I'm just gonna drain it. So that's where the drain port is going to be for. That's the one that I made, which I which I really wanted because it's just going to be easier to drain everything. So, all right. So for part to do the drain in the lowest part of the loop, which I did. I mean, it's the definitely the lowest part. So I'm just gonna hold this like this, and I'm gonna open up the ball valve, and then theoretically everything should flow out oh and then i should also open up the this part because else there's no air let's close this again oh it was going slow because i still had the cap on it's, uh, it's kind of stupid all right let's uh, fill her up again if it survives the leak test then i'm gonna fill it up with regular water Alright, so I'm not just gonna leave this run. I guess I'm gonna wrap it with some paper. Um, then I'm gonna go to the office. I'm uh, gonna do some work. Um, and then hopefully everything will still be fine when I get back. If it still is, uh, I will probably leave it running until tomorrow morning. Then I will have a 24 hour run. If it's fine for 24 hours, then I guess that should be good enough to. Uh, yeah, to uh, install the final thing, because if there's no leaks after 24 hours, I think we can be pretty sure that it's uh, that it's that it's proper loop. So yeah, um, so I'm just gonna wait until the bubbles are out a little bit, and then I'm gonna do the paper stuff. I'm not gonna film that. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, I'll check back tomorrow. So <laughs> see you tomorrow. Okay, so I just got back from the office. Uh, no leaks yet, so that's good. Um, what I actually did is I took uh, took my 1080 from the office, so I have my 1080 here. Because I had these issues earlier where my um, where the 970 wasn't fitting in the top slot, so I want to make sure that this thing is actually fitting on there. And I figured I could already try it out uh, while this is still leak testing. I can just screw these out, plop it in. Because if it doesn't fit. That's a little bit confusing to me actually, because why would they make a motherboard that doesn't even fit a regular regular uh, Founders Edition Type 1080, which is pretty much a basic type design. So I'm just gonna try to uh, get that in, see see what it does, I think. <coughs> right, so I put it in. Uh, so uh, I'm just gonna continue to leave the loop running um and i will uh, continue with the thing tomorrow if everything is uh still leak free tomorrow i'll go put in the power supply in the case hook up the cables and then we can well and i also i need to fill with the actual fluid tomorrow but that's not gonna take too long um yeah and then we can actually uh yeah we can actually start installing it and do all of the other cool stuff so uh fingers crossed all right good morning it's been about uh, 24 hours since the uh, since I fired up the pump. So I'm gonna take off the uh, the paper towel and see if uh, let me check my audio is actually recording. Yeah, it is. So uh, I'm just gonna take off the paper towel and just see if it's all still dry. And if it is, I'm going to drain it out. Then I'm gonna install the uh, the PSU into the case, uh, hook up the fans. <coughs> Screw, screw this thing on a little bit tighter. Uh, like put in the fan controller, all of that stuff, put all the cables in, and then we can finally fire it up. Uh, get Windows on there. Yes, I'm going to install Windows. I'm not gonna do Linux. And I know some of you are gonna be like, ah, Linux, but uh, I just have some stuff that I use that I need Windows for. So maybe I'll do dual boot at some point, but I mean, <laughs> I have enough RAM anyway, so it's not gonna matter that it's a little bit less efficient with the uh, RAM, so. Uh, yeah, let's just check the paper. It's all looking good. So uh, let's just drain this thing and then, um, well, I'm gonna throw this away and then um, drain this thing and then we can finally put everything in. 
then we finally have a, uh, a full system and then I can finally also clean this mess up because it's just my entire room here is filled up with trash and it's just really annoying and I just wanted to get it out of the way so I'm really happy that it didn't leak else I have would have needed to sort that all out but now we can just continue uh, with the build so uh All right, so it's plugged in. Um, I'm going to boot it up in a second. So it's still, this is still displaying my monitor from the laptop that I'm recording from. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna turn it on, see if I can still get into the BIOS and stuff, see if everything's working. So hopefully, uh, I mean, we did test it before with the, uh, just the heat block on. So I, I'm confident that it should probably work. So let's hope, I really don't wanna Go and troubleshoot that so uh because i really I'd rather just leave all the memory sticks in there but uh we'll see how it goes and uh yeah let's just try it so i'm gonna turn it on here so cpu looking pretty good uh it's idle of course but uh i mean 35c uh idle i guess that's that's pretty good um let's see if these are yeah everything is spinning let me just record that with my phone So all the fans are spinning, intake fans working, outtake is working. Yeah, so here we have the uh, the SSDs. Um, so the fast ones, which I'm gonna rate, and then just the main one, I'm gonna use the OS. Um, so XMP, so the memory still here is at uh, 2667, because we have XMP disabled, so I'm gonna tweak the uh, the XMP and the memory so because it should have XMP profiles for um, yeah to run at 3600 so let's see if that's actually gonna work let's first see if we can what's the oh BIOS version F3 all right because I think that's that's not the latest BIOS so before I'm gonna do anything let me just check because I had the um, on my laptop so F3 is quite an old one. So it's from uh, 20th of January. So let's download the latest one. All right, uh, let's go to QFlash. Update BIOS. Yes. Okay. SunDisk. And there it is. Should be this one. Are you sure you want to update BIOS? Yes. Verifying file. Um, is, it, is it done? Oh, press to start. Okay. Updating the BIOS. Oh, the nice thing with this motherboard, by the way, is that it has two BIOSes. So it has an update BIOS. So you can see down here it says also, also update backup BIOS. Um, and I'm not gonna do that yet. Be a good idea to just only do this one unless I screw them up both. That's probably not the best idea. So let's just. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, we're in. So that's the latest BIOS. So yeah, let's just check XMP. Uh, let's see. XMP Pro for 1, 3600. So. Let's see if that works. So, um, so profile one. Are there any any more profiles? Oh, there's only one profile. Uh, so yeah, profile one, 3600, 210, whatever. But going to be round down. So, 256 gigabytes. So, this seems to work. Uh, of course, I am going to need to run some memory tests for this. But I'm first just going to install um, Windows, I guess, because I mean, just to get Windows on there, and then once everything is up and running, 
Uh, then I'm gonna do all, oh wait, I need to configure the rate first. So I'm first gonna configure the rate and then I am going to install Windows. So let's do that. All right, so according to have the manual here, I need to go to settings. So in advanced settings, um, well, let me just see. All right, so this is easy mode. So again, you go to advanced mode or just press F2, whatever that you get here and go to settings. We're gonna go to IO, uh, rate expert, where is it? All right, MVME raid mode. Okay, so apparently that changed in the BIOS. MVME raid mode, uh, enabled. Okay, well, we also apparently need to do it. Go to boot CMS support to disabled. Uh, disabled, all right. All right, now let's go into IO port. Ah, okay, there it is. Great expert. Great expert configuration utility. Oh no, not the. Uh, this one all right array management create array select grade level uh wait. select physical disks uh, hmm okay that's weird one second okay so when you enable the array um uh, it may apparently it configures everything as a array by default I'm going to uh, enable this one, enable this one, delete those as arrays. I should in all data, confirm, enabled, yes. All right. Um, so this one is already seen as an array, so I guess as an array zero. All right. So I guess I can go back now, go to create array, uh, array zero, because I want to be array zero, because then it's going to be striped, going to be fast, so it's going to split the data across the disks. Uh, again, you don't want to do that if you don't make proper backups. Right, I'm going to enable this one, that one, and apply changes. Okay, so this uh, looks like it's working. So now we have two RAID arrays. Well, at least, at least one with uh, just going to be my boot drive. And then the other one is going to be the uh, Gen 4 thing. Um, all right, so that's looking good. So we have the XMP profile enabled. We have the RAID enabled. So I guess I'm going to make a bootable disk now for Windows. And then I am going to install Windows on it. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that. All right. Uh, yeah. So let's just install this. So uh, yeah, we're in the thing here. So let's go uh, oh, boot it from the installation medium. So I made a bootable USB from Windows. And again, I know I'm going to install Windows. I know Houdini and all that sort of stuff is faster on uh, Linux, but um, I work via remote desktop quite a lot, and I just uh, I use Parsec for that. And also I still do projects with people uh, where I use uh, Adobe quite a lot. So it's also something that I use. I know I can use my old works in for that as well, but it's just something that I am not ready to go to uh, completely to Linux. And I don't want to deal with dual boot because it's just going to be annoying with uh, uh, putting back and forth. So I guess for now, this is just uh, going to be fine. Okay, I'm going to... Probably in a second, it's gonna ask me to connect to Wi Fi in order to update some stuff. So, the motherboard comes with some uh, dongles, which are some things, uh, which are the, these. Let me zoom out a little bit. So, um, yeah, it comes with two of those. Let me just grab the other one as well. Another one. So, they plug into the backside. Let me just put the Plastic off from it. I'm not gonna run a cable for this again. Again, I'm going to move this system to my studio. 
after this is all configured I'm just gonna use Wi-Fi while I'm using this over here so let's just I'm not sure why these are the why the other drives are not showing up as one drive drive because I have a hardware RAID but I can fix that later if it doesn't show up as one partition in Windows so I'm just gonna first just install this on the uh, drive zero which is the um, so that's my regular uh, Gen 3 NVMe so I'm just gonna go next alright so very quick I am in um, in Windows of course first thing I'm doing is installing Chrome because I don't want to use Edge <laughs> but uh, yeah so it's working um, I'm gonna install some more stuff get some software on there and I'll report back whenever that's that is done and um, after that, after ever I have configured all of that, I am going to uh, do some memory testing, stability testing, and all kinds of other stuff like that. So I'll report back when I have that. All right, hey everybody. So I didn't have a proper outro recorded, so I figured I'd do one, do one now after the fact. So I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was quite long. Uh, I know it was quite long, but I'd rather make it too long instead of too short because uh, now you can sort of use it as a reference guide i guess if you want to do your own water cooling build and it's not just a overview thing because i'm showing i showed all of the issues that i ran into uh there were a couple of more things that i um i did have recorded but i figured it would be better to do an outro so in order to have every to get everything connected uh, the, like the front usb headers for example you need a kind of a converter because i uh, ran into some clearance issues with the uh with the pump so you need some connector in order to like it's a 90 degree angle connector to, in order to uh, connect the front headers aside from that everything is fine so everything is uh, up and running um also everything uh like i mentioned with the syncing back and forth with the drives over here uh, so the nvme to the server works absolutely phenomenal uh especially now that i have it now in my local network here now that all of my computers are uh over here it's all working really well so if i uh, do something on my internal NVMe it gets instantly synced to my uh, to my NAS drive and I have some Python scripts for example that remap uh, paths so if I for example on uh, one machine render it will render to the NAS drive the NAS drive will sync back to my internal NVMe drive and so everything works uh, pretty seamless so I'm pretty happy with that so that's going to be the next video where we're going to talk about the software uh, also of course we still need to water cool the GPU so uh, I am going to uh, order my uh, water cooling components for my GPU next because I didn't do that yet because I was in the midst of moving and I didn't uh, want the water cooling components to show up at maybe my old apartment because there was like quite a long wait for them to be shipped out so I figured I'd wait until everything like all of the dust is settled I have my new apartment uh, and I also have a nice workbench over there which you cannot see but uh, that's where I can record the uh, that kind of stuff and uh, also in the meantime all of the video quality everything should be approved so maybe by the end of, of next year or maybe early next year we'll f I finally have a proper professional YouTube channel with like the quality getting better and better and better um, anyway hope you enjoyed today's video if you did leave this a thumbs up uh, if you like to see more of these videos make sure to subscribe uh, I have a lot of cool stuff coming up so as always uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video about software and another one about uh, water cooling the GPU. So thanks guys. Peace.